Hi, and welcome to Tech Leader TV. I'm your host, John Thomas Flynn, and this fall will mark our 10th anniversary of TLTV. Ten years, do you believe it? And we continue with a stellar lineup of topics and guests, a show that everyone's talking about, a live streaming video webcast and cable television program focusing on the public sector, technology, and the political landscape. We come to you today courtesy of our sponsors, Unisys, LexisNexis, Xerox, Dimension Data, Veeam, Comcast, Tanium, Kronos, Optum, Gigaman, and Next Level. And finally, Flynn Kosick and Associates, a California certified small business enterprise and trusted advisor for strategic IT business development, marketing, and solution services. And thanks for watching. The Tech Leader TV website continues to set new audience records. We're reaching thousands of state IT decision makers and their vendor partners who recorded 250,000, a quarter of a million page views last month alone. We recorded 2 million views last year, and our goal is to double that again in 2016. And we have a very special program today with our guest, Scott Gregory, Deputy Director of the California Office of Digital Information and the state's Geographical Information Officer. Usually, as our longtime viewers of Tech Leader TV know, before I introduce my guest and we begin our conversation, I usually request your indulgence to allow me to pontificate on pressing issues of the day. However, today I will refrain from my impassionate observation. No, please, my mind's made up. This will allow more time for some exciting news and a surprise or two from our guests. But as usual on Tech Leader TV, we're going to continue to do our best to keep the spotlight on the state's management of its annual multi-billion dollar IT investment to make government more efficient and more effective and more secure. And hopefully we'll have a little fun and keep your interest at the same time. Our motto is simple, as I like to say, California can always do better. Let's begin the journey now with our discussion on technology, government, politics, and as I like to say, other unnatural acts. I'll be right back in a moment with our guest, and we'll begin. Hi, and welcome back to Tech Leader TV. As I mentioned, our guest today is Scott Gregory, and Scott wears two hats in the organization of the Department of Technology. He's the Deputy Director of the Office of Digital in in Innovation and is also the state's uh, ge Geographical Information Officer. In the former role, he leads an organization that was created just this year that is in the front line, really, of the state's open data, open source initiatives, and a lot more of that we'll learn about today. Secondly, as the GIS officer, his goal is to build a mature GIS, including statewide seamless digital data and strong networks of people and resources, rich technology to provide GIS capability. Scott, welcome to Tech Leader TV. Thank Pleasure you, to have a GIS officer here. We haven't had one before. Well, this is exciting. I'm we all take, here. we so much take for granted uh, uh, GIS, and like I said, now you're wearing two hats. So yeah. tell us a little bit about your background, how you came in to uh, end up in your current position. Oh, gosh. Uh, well, background educationally, um, uh, undergraduate training in natural sciences and geography with an emphasis in GIS. You never met anybody majored in geography? You never met anybody? <laughs> well, this is a first, right? <laughs> yeah. No. Um, and uh, naturally, that led me down one or two paths. One would be uh, the urban planning path, mm -hmm. or one would be a uh, new, exciting field. Uh, I think it still is. Uh, and at the time, it was very new and burgeoning. It was geographic information systems. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go that direction, and it subsequently led me to um, different engagements with different levels of government, academia, and private sector uh, opportunities mm -hmm. to broaden my scope of understanding of the technology and, and application. Mm -hmm. um, came out of private industry uh, into state <coughs> government, and that's where I landed now uh, mm -hmm. with the role of state GIO. Mm -hmm. And did you spend some time with the feds? Uh, I did spend some time. I was with uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, okay. uh, Sacramento District. There I was, okay. the GIS manager for the Army Corps. Okay. We managed primarily military and civil uh, civil uh, engineering projects uh, mm -hmm. worldwide. It was really an exciting time. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the, let's talk about your organizations. Are there two separate organizations, the GIS and the digital in innovation part? Two separate organizations, two separate teams, more or less? Well, actually, it's, it's one, uh, uh, truthfully. Um, you know, uh, GIS and geospatial technology has always been at the heart of data science and data analytics and providing data-driven, <clears throat> excuse me, data-driven decision-making for government. Mm -hmm. um, 
with the development of this new office, GIS became another tool, if you will, in that tool belt for the Office of Digital Innovation to kind of drive okay. towards some of our goals. Mm -hmm. So what's your, how big is your organization? How much money do you have? What are your big... Uh... Well, <laughs> we're growing, it seems, daily. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we began um, as an organization of just one, and that was me. Uh, okay. When I first came on, and we've grown to over, uh, we're currently over approximately 105 wow. uh, uh, folks from different areas that mm -hmm. make up the Office of Digital Innovation. Okay. Um, in terms of budget, that's uh, TBD. It's so it's so yeah. very new. We're still kind mm -hmm. of, um, you know, as we're bringing in and aggregating different organizations, we're uh -huh. kind of lining that up behind the scenes. Where are you? Where are you? Most of your team located? Are you on J Street or? Uh, most of the team is actually located in Rancho Cordova. Yeah, I thought probably. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's it's. I was shocked to, to learn there's 100 people there. Yeah, that's a lot of people in one well, year. You know, Do you bring have, them in new hires or from all over the place? Uh, I I, I've made some recent strategic new hires. So mm -hmm. uh, recently um, pulled in some data scientists uh, mm -hmm. from academia. Mm -hmm. um, recently added a, a new individual, actually like a couple of days ago, from the UN, uh, former World Health Organization data okay. guru. So right. we're, uh, we're we're trying to broaden the portfolio in terms of mm -hmm. our capabilities because mm -hmm. it's going to take a very diverse workforce mm -hmm. to be able to approach innovation in California and kind of mm -hmm. take a new a new step forward. Right. right. Well, th that leads me to my next question. I was talking about the other relevant organizations now that we have this open data, open source, right. uh, big data, the whole data mining, the whole. Oh, yeah process thereof and just can you describe uh, how your organization and your teams fit in say with uh, Stuart Drown in his yeah. innovation office right. and also uh, the chief data officer who I sure. believe is over at government ops they right? are yeah. actually I was uh, I was just meeting with both of them prior to coming okay. over here should yeah. have brought them with you I, I, I tried to coax them I tried to coax <laughs> them but uh, they said next time <laughs> Stuart's the only person to show up late uh, each he, showed up I'm gonna razz uh, him for that just, uh, well he wasn't late he was <laughs> He was frightfully on time. Oh, Let's put it that very way. Punctual. Okay, yes. <laughs> very good. Um, so you know, we we have been working hand in hand, uh, Department of Technology, with our with our agency on a number of initiatives. I, I'd say for approximately the last two two and a half years, especially around open data, Department of Technology has been right there at the table with with uh, Stuart and some of the initiatives that he's kicked off in his role, mm -hmm. uh, really laying the groundwork for what open data will be, what transparency will be okay. related to data in the state. Yeah, what do, what do you, what, when you use the term uh, open data, what do you mean by it? Open data and open source, it's a little primer sure. for our, yeah. our so readers I'll, and our I'll, guests. I'll take one at a time. So o open data, uh, imagine open data as data that government uh, creates, curates, manages, and shares publicly. Mm -hmm. Now we're not talking about personally identifiable information or health related information. We're, we're not interested in that. We're interested in um, budgetary information. Yeah. Um, where, um, but some of that other information just mentioned, as long as it's not tied to a personal, a person, a personal individual, something like that, I would think would be very helpful. For, well, there's uh, certainly for value, that. and there's also value for the in, big in, reason. intragovernmental for that use. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a number of use cases for. Um, the conversation around open data. You know, mm -hmm. government to government is certainly one. Government right. to business is a major, major impetus for us putting some of this out. Mm -hmm. um, but also, most importantly, is government to citizen. The idea around open data is to draw government closer to citizens, to make them more informed, to mm -hmm. to be more transparent with our transactions and the things that we do. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. that's what that's what our hope Daylight's is. Daylight's the for best the disinfectant. Is uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, as Justice Brandeis said, sometimes right? the data doesn't lie, right? We need mm -hmm. to, we need to be very honest about it. Yeah, yeah. In God we trust. Everybody else bring data. Uh, <laughs> I think Eric Schmidt said that. I'm going to quote you on that one. How about that? <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> Win me the first time. We've yeah. walked away with this show with a a few little uh, a few little ad libs. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, but but just so I understand, so the chief data officer and Stewart are yeah. both in that uh, the agency Cor correct office. Okay, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So so Stewart Drown um, and Zachary Townsend, who is our new chief right. data officer, they they both take on um, I'd say the broad based strategic um, application of how we're going to move forward with mm -hmm. open data from governance mm -hmm. to implementation. Mm -hmm. Where we come to the table, and it's truly our our um, I say our strength is to operationalize that. You know, we're a Department of Technology. We have the skill sets and mm -hmm. the capabilities, the infrastructure to be able to support it, mm -hmm. support the initiatives that agency is wanting us to execute. Well, that's on. a very good point. That was my next uh, uh, question I was going to bring up. You're really there to, as a, uh, you know, what's the word? Uh, 
a provocateur, if you will, or an evangelist among the agencies to encourage them to mm -hmm. proceed in this kind of open data, open source, trans transparency world? Yeah, I think we have a we, we have a role and we have a swim lane. I, primarily, that would be more of a Zachary Townsend role mm -hmm. to be able to evangelize the benefits mm -hmm. and, and, and um, uh, good that comes through open data. Mm -hmm. We're there to help support Zach's vision and okay. help drive um, the adoption of the platform, not only that, but also the curation and management of it behind the scenes. I mean, it has to. It's, it's like, right. you, it's not a one and right. done. It's a living, okay. breathing thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I understand you want to show us some of your latest yeah. uh, initiatives coming out of your sure. Office of Innovation and the GIS work that you're, you're doing. I yeah. know it's a uh, I've uh, I've done some surfing around it myself, and it's very fascinating. So Good. please, uh, if you're ready, we Good. can switch right over to that. And, yeah, uh, I'd be happy to. On the screen up here um, in the studio. Yeah. So okay, great. So everyone can see it. So what you're seeing here is uh, data.ca.gov, and uh, for some of the viewers, they might remember the previous iteration of data.ca.gov. It was released around 2008, and it was in an attempt to show a, le a greater measure of transparency in sharing mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. Um, we recognized that through that process, um, uh, again, to, to, to use a quote I used before, it's not a one and done. You have to maintain, you have to feed it. You yeah, got to sure. care and feed. So um, in our work with Government Operations Agency, Department of Technology, we developed uh, the state's open data platform at data.ca.gov. Now, he here's a key aspect of this, and, and this is an area I... Um, I still need to describe open source, and this is a good, say, this is a good opportunity other, to do that. That was the other one, yeah. yes. So open source technology <coughs> is, um, is, a, is a very um, broad term, but uh, for us, and, and the way that we look at it, is that um, the technology itself, under the hood, the code, the way it works, the way we can customize it, all of that is open to the user, versus a closed source system where uh, you may buy a, a product off the shelf and, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of get what you get. Right. Um, for us, we needed a little bit more freedom. We mm -hmm. needed to be able to uh, tailor this to California's needs. I mean, we, we both know, right? Yeah. You've, been, you've been in California a long time, as I have. It's a very diverse state. There's a lot of diverse needs, and we need to be able to to work with that and be with mm -hmm. that tempo. And so open source allowed us to do that. Yeah. So it, in, in, in perfectly layman's terms, yeah. it just makes the data that more... Uh, accessible and usable and manipulable, if you will. Well, open data does, yeah. but the code that underlies this platform, mm -hmm. that's open as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, in a way... So it's, it's not proprietary, et cetera, et cetera. That's not proprietary. Whole, the whole, that's whole the whole low. point. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So if you, if, if you look at the open data platform, there's a number of things that you can do. And, and by all means, this is not an exhaustive list of the data that will be made available. This is our first cut. So you'll soon start to see more information related to water, perhaps related to drought. I think I saw um, about 14 data sets. Is that right? For uh, On this system right now. Oh, no, 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 there's many. A lot more than that? Oh, yeah, indeed, okay. there's many more. I guess my surfing didn't, <laughs> wasn't as thought, thoughtful as I thought it was. Yeah, All yeah. Right. You'll see a, a big uptick in data um, availability here um, because behind the scenes what we have not added to this yet is the state's geo portal, which is what um, the other hat that I okay. wear. Okay, okay. Uh, we actively um, maintain and manage about 3,500 unique data sets. So mm -hmm. we're going we're gonna to aggregate those here. Again, they're okay. geographic yeah. data sets. But okay. But, um, you know, a lot of benefits there. So when we, we click here, you can see that you can get access to things like uh, building sustainability, um, CO2 emissions. Now, this might be sort of like, wow, okay, well, wh what does that do? But you have to understand the audience here. The audience is everything from the, the sixth grader that's going to write a report mm -hmm. all the way up to the postdoctoral uh, researcher at Stanford okay. that's doing some interesting work maybe for a government or an NGO. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to speak to that broad audience. Mm -hmm. and we're, Our hope is that we can capture that right. in a very easy and intuitive way. Right. Here. Okay. So, uh, for example, uh, when you are working with the department mm -hmm. and working with them to, uh, to enlist in this new uh, endeavor, yeah. um, how do you go about doing it? How does it begin? What do you, what do you, what do you get them to come to the table with? How do yeah. you get them to cooperate? Well, et cetera, as you know, et in, in your previous role, relationships mean a lot, do they not? I sure. mean, relationships are almost everything. Right. The technology is very easy, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it's 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 what makes business sense. What makes mm -hmm. what makes sense for the citizen and for the folks mm -hmm. obviously that we serve. 
So I always you, said that's always nice, but it's nice to have a law backing you up. Well, is there any legislation right now that requires departments actually no, to? Not, uh, not that I'm not aware yet. of. Not there that should I'm aware be, of. but go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, so you uh, sit down with DMV or do. something we, like we that. We sit down and we talk about okay. What, what are some of the things that you're interested in? What, what are some of the things that you share currently? Mm -hmm. um, how do you do it? Yeah. Is it efficient? I mean, think of the PRA process. Think about the numbers. PRA. Public, Public Records, Records Act. Act. Apologies. Yeah. Yeah. I should be more explicit with That's my right. acronym. That's all right. Public Records Act. Right? I caught it. Go ahead. I knew you would. <laughs> <laughs> um, the amount of money spent just pulling that information together oh, yeah. from printing things to mm -hmm. the, the personnel yeah. time. There's a more efficient way, yeah. right? So that's well, a pain point. We go to an organization, we say, hey, can we help there? Well, you know, DMV is a really good example because, as I'm sure you know, they make millions. They mm -hmm. make millions selling the data right. in, their, in their system to insurance companies and places yeah. like that. Sure. They're very, very reluctant to open the kimono about that. But <laughs> it is. It's in the tens of millions of dollars yeah. a year. Yeah. And uh, I, think that's, I think that's possibly true for a lot of this. There's ab 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 actually some revenue enhancement uh, aspects to the big data and this this open data yeah. process well big certainly time. i mean we, we we would be kidding ourselves if there if if there wasn't but here's my thinking on this in, in my experience um federal county private is um it's a it's a paradigm shift it's a culture shift it really is mm -hmm. um being able to open up and share this information um and seeing the benefits that can come from that from yeah. Agency talking to agency, department talking to department, or just a better communication with the citizen. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's quantifiable and there's qualitative gains to be made yeah. there. But but it's a real challenge. I mean, I I know the uh, any any time you're trying to get access to data from yeah. a different agency, they're very very. Yeah, depending uh, on the data, uh, right? Most of course. the time, yeah. it's very very difficult. Uh, uh, I've always found that. Uh, uh, you know, I've been going to NASIO conferences, and when this topic's brought up, and you'll get three or four people on a panel, and one, right. they go through the, the litany of lists of why they haven't done it yet. Well, we want to make sure the data is all accurate. <laughs> we don't yeah. want to send it out there because right. they're embarrassed about the sure. data they have in some respects. Yeah. And then there's just the, the traditional challenge you have, particularly in revenue agencies, tax agencies, yeah. about giving that information out. It's very, very. Bread uh, butter, right? It's a, you've got to have that attitude, like I always said, I think you have, Scott, and that is you have to, to be successful in what you're going to do. You have to be able to go from frustration to frustration to frustration without yeah. any loss of enthusiasm. Exactly. And I think you've got that. Oh, I believe I do. <laughs> I believe I do. I really believe in this. I think it's, um, I, I think it's important. Yeah. Well, show us some of the uh, exciting yeah. stuff. We've been yeah, talking sure. too I, much. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know, it might be, uh, let me see if I can bring, bring this up here. Um, bear with me here. That's all right. Well, this is relatively things, new, or what we're looking at. Is this, this is the data portal. Yeah, this been is, open about how long? Uh, open data portal released September 1st of this year. Okay. Uh, three month turnaround. Okay. Um, which I'm really proud of the team that pulled this together. We three really, week turnaround was September 1st. Well, that's when it was live. Oh, it's live. been open. I, I that's see. When I, I never mind. Okay. Well, so three weeks right now makes it sound even better. I appreciate that's that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, but you know something else that I'd like to share, and I know that we'll, we'll probably get into this conversation, is around this. Um, one of the key words in the in the title of the new organization that's innovation, mm -hmm. right? Um, so one of the one of the uh, really I'd say pillars of of what we're doing right now around innovation is um, something we created um, again this summer. We we had a big summer. We had a mm -hmm. lot of releases of things. We had ca.gov go live, or complete rewrite of that. That's the that's, that's the state's that's the website. state's web page, official right? web page, official right. web page. We took it from kind of an old antiquated way of links and. Uh, buttons to uh, more of a services-driven mm -hmm. tool, very transactional. And all done in-house primarily or um, contractor leaders? I, or? We had a contractor help support us with some of that. But, Who was that? Um, we had SimSoft Solutions okay. uh, support us with some of that work. Right. Um, we're since taking on some of that work internally here because mm -hmm. um, I think that's important to not only be taught to fish but learn how to fish yourself. Right? Sure. we got to do that ourselves. But the... California State Innovation Lab was an outgrowth of an idea that came out of one of our innovation meetups or codathons that we had okay. uh, around open data. And a codathon being a a codathon is um, where uh, an organization will put up data or mm -hmm. put up an idea okay. that um, citizen coders or okay. um, government coders can okay. come in and propose a solution around mm -hmm. that. Uh, coincidentally, out of out of our our first codathon, we received 14 applications. Now, granted, they weren't production ready, yeah. um, but they were seeds, mm -hmm. and it got us to think. You know, the state needs a place 
where we can experiment, yeah. where we can be not afraid to fail. Right? Mm -hmm. And so um, naturally we, we, we run our on-premise cloud solution, CalCloud, mm -hmm. and we needed a place to be able to put this. And so we built the California Innovation Lab there. Okay. What the Innovation Lab is, is a sandbox, if you will, for departments, agencies, mm -hmm. individuals or teams to come in and build a, um, an infrastructure to be able to do experimentation with purely open source technology. And that's okay. the caveat, it's pure, purely for open source. For example? Well, for example, um, like um, let's say a department has a purely paper process mm -hmm. and gosh, you know, they're, they're spending 40 hours a week trying to get this mailer out or get something done. We invite them to come into the lab and apply some technology to that. You have a and definable they, you're business. And invite them, would that be that, that, that department? Yeah, we would invite that department or um, put the ask out to folks, mm -hmm. hey, uh, would you like to participate? Please come right. in. I'll, I'll show you some of that okay. and how we engage those folks. All right. Um, but the idea is that you come in and you apply technology to it to make us more efficient, yeah. to make us more cost effective. Okay. And then on top of that... It's a rich one, target environment. I know it, that. It is. But once they're done with mm -hmm. the development of that, right. fork that, meaning take that code and put it into a public repository where other coders can get it, other okay. government entities can get it. So we're not yeah. reinventing the wheel right. over okay. and over and over again. All right, show us the stuff. We keep telling these viewers we're going to show them something. All here. right. Well, well, okay, we're going to show you a little bit here. So, um, you know, folks come to the lab. Um, they Where's can, the physical location of the lab, or is it all virtual? It's all virtual. Okay, okay. It's all virtual, yeah. Um, so folks come to the lab, and there's a couple of ways in which they can engage the lab. They can come in, they can learn about it. Oh, boy, I'm not sure what I just did there. Let me close this out. Sorry about this. And is this open to just to uh, state employees right now or anybody? Right now, this is open to CA.gov uh, employees, so okay. California state employees. Okay. And contractors that are working with the okay. state. The state needs to sponsor those contractors I got to come in. Okay. So essentially, this, this so outline. semi open. <laughs> it's semi. It's semi open. I mean, you know, we got to take the crawl walk no, around approach. You know, I we understand. don't want to blow the doors right open yet, yeah. but. Um, so you come in, you fill out, you know, your, your, who you are, um, a brief description of, your, of your, um, the problem you're trying to solve. This is really important for us. We don't want folks in there just because they're curious, just because, you know, they want to do some kind of science right. experiment. I need a tangible problem you're trying to solve, and well, it needs to be articulated. Let here. me back up on that point, Scott, and clarify. Yeah. Is, you, you said that anybody with a CA.gov in their email address, That's if right. you will, is eligible to go in and do this. Is, has that been... Has this become an issue because uh, if some people don't want people doing this on their work time, or how is that? How is well, it, this is government? You it's know, well, there's got to right. be something. You know, <laughs> right. Can't right. be all good, right? Yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, Are those so far so good? You know, we have well, you know, it's very new. Yeah. And we're still kind of uh, okay. working some kinks out. Okay. But um, well, good for you. Stay I think tuned. it's great. Stay yeah. tuned. I'm hoping for some some real positive things that come out of this. Well, yeah, because there's so many uh, there's so many issues that the employees themselves know all about oh, and right. it's just been doing the, done the same way for 10 years because it's been that's the way it's always been done. Yeah, you know what's exciting to me about this and one of the things that made me want to push for this is the collective intelligence of the crowd mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, and and how that's how, not crowdsourcing, uh, is it? Well, that's crowds more are, it's a little bit different. Yeah. So collective intelligence is kind of tapping the the collective yeah. mind of the organization well, it's just to help like solve a Microsoft problem. Microsoft used to do by yeah. putting out a new version and letting the letting their users find the the, uh, the errors. <laughs> and that sort was of, intentional. Sort of. Well, yeah, yeah right. In but, the early days, yeah. But for, for us, you know, we'd be very obtuse to say we have all the answers. Yeah. So yeah. we want to start to collaborate again with folks to help us solve yeah. some of these really um, right. big challenges that we have. Yeah. Um, so at any rate, folks come in and, you know, they can sign up. Once, once they come in, they sign up. We have a, a, a folks within my office that, do, that does a review of the submittals. Mm -hmm. um, and you know if it if it meets the criteria for coming in, if is it specific? Can we measure it? Um, you know, does it does it make sense that it would that it, that it can participate in the lab? Then we, mm -hmm. we go forward with that, and then we invite them in. Mm -hmm. We provide authentication for them, walk right. them through the process of standing up a sandbox, and mm -hmm. they're off and running. Right. Um, everything from operating system to database to um, collaboration environment, whether it's Jenkins or Slack or whatnot. You know, it's all there mm -hmm. uh, for folks to use. And if it okay. blows up, delete okay. it and start over. And it started when? September 1st? 
Um, let's see. We released Innovation Lab. Soft launch <coughs> was end of July. We are full-fledged, okay. full launch right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. And t to this point, how many... Uh, you, how many we initiatives have, are you supporting we, or exploring, I should say? Well, we're, currently, we're exploring approximately eight to ten different initiatives yeah. from across the state. Give a couple, couple examples. Sure. Without mention to, if, you know, just yeah, so uh, one example, um, Water Resources Control Board has a um, uh, paper process. And they want, they want to take that that's done on a desktop computer and build it into a web-enabled application. Mm -hmm. And that's a, great, that's a great use case for, yeah. for, for the lab itself. Um, uh, some partners within Health and Human Services uh, recently contacted me about um, taking, taking some original work that was done um, related to Twitter and discovery of information through Twitter. Um, discovery of open data on their open data portal mm. and building that out more so to become more of a production level tool that okay. can be then used by other organizations that want okay. to. Okay. Um, well, can, can these sorts of things be any kind of uh, business process that can be improved or does it have to, do you expect it to rely on coding and technology to get it solved? Or well, you the know, foundation here is, is, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't expect it to because not all problems are, right, are solved right, with technology, sure. right? right? Um, yeah. But where technology fits, mm -hmm. um, That's we, what invi you want we invite folks yeah. to come in and experiment. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, one last thing I might, want, I might share here is, let me go back to the home page, mm -hmm. um, and we'll scroll down. This is an important aspect of this, and this is the development of this community of... Goodness, let me close this. Sorry about that. Um, this should bring up a new tab. Ugh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out your browser here. Sorry, right. take your time. Ah, <laughs> uh, here we go. Um, I think this might be it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what you're seeing here, when I when I clicked on library, mm -hmm. that's putting us out to GitHub. And for those that don't know what GitHub right. is, it's a worldwide community of open source developers that um, use this uh, platform, GitHub, to post um, code, applications, mm -hmm. tools. Okay. So now what we've done through, through my office is developed a page um, there where we can share the good work that we've done. Mm -hmm. And organizations across the state can work through our page to mm -hmm. post information up. Okay. So we have a number of applications out there that we've developed, as I scroll through this, you can see a few, um, that are a direct result of work done in the open source space. Okay, read them off so we can... Uh... Sure. Uh, well, okay, well, we have um, oh, this new one website. Apologies, I don't know what that one is. I can tell you what these other ones are. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> uh, EB5, this is uh, an application we developed around um, uh, tax incentives for um, investment in high poverty, high unemployment areas in the state. Mm -hmm. So it was a mapping application, but the, the, the queries and the algorithms that were developed, we've posted those for others to mm -hmm. use for similar, mm -hmm. um, similar tool or similar application. Uh, Socrata metadata, this is a harvesting mm -hmm. tool for the Socrata open data platform. Okay. Um, the open data handbook, this is a, a wonderful handbook, and I would encourage folks to go out and look at this. This is something that our Health and Human Services Agency pulled together for how to how to manage open data, how to, how to approach an open data uh, endeavor right. in an organization. Right. Um, some work with CalHR, with the Cal Jobs Schema, Hack for SAC is some of the results done through a hackathon or mm -hmm. codeathon we've done mm -hmm. with the city of Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Green Buyer application is an application we're, we're, um, we've released and we're still um, uh, adding to it for looking at um, government owned and leased building sustainability. How much water we're using, what's our carbon mm -hmm. footprint, CO2. And by the way, not only is the application out there, but the links to the data that supports okay. the application is there as well. And We've only got about five more minutes. Sure. So why, uh, what, are, what are some of the other sites? I know there's the, the one we talked about, the challenge uh, ah. aspect that you were yeah. so excited about and, so, and certainly uh, got me excited about. <laughs> Good. Let me, uh, let me see if I can cue this up. Uh, in many sense, what we've been talking about so far in the Innovation Lab involved, as you say, involves uh, uh, state resources, state employees and, and mm -hmm. contractors that do things. It's kind of a, an employee suggestion box is what I compared it to in real layman's terms. But it's also this new one, this, the, the challenge site, what's it called? Yeah. 
Um, find my well. So, so the, the 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 site we're taking folks to right now is called Find a New Way. Find a New Way. Okay. The application itself, we're we're tinkering with a few ideas, but one that we're we're uh, pretty close to solidifying on is challenge.ca.gov. Okay. okay. So the idea behind this is uh, back to something we were talking about earlier, where you know there there are um, things that need to be solved mm -hmm. in government. There are things that um, need attention. Uh, there's better ways to do things. And when we look at challenge.ca.gov, we want to have a place where we can post those organizational challenges mm -hmm. to a community of solvers. And those solvers could be from government, could be mm -hmm. from business, hopefully from the citizenry, right. that can come together and help, yeah. us, help us bring a resolution to something. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I actually refer to it as a citizen, a citizen suggestion box for yeah, I mean, civic you, you engagement. Certainly could. You yeah. certainly could. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I think it'll be interesting to see. Uh, now, when will that be? Is it, is it uh, in January when it'll be we, up well, and working? We're, we're, I think? We're, looking, we're looking at a late January, early yeah. February. That's uh, exciting stuff. Time frame, yeah. Um, but what I think here, what this, what this will do, um, mm -hmm. and I keep referring to this phrase, and I, it's very important um, f for, for the work that we're doing, it's our opportunity to bring government much closer to citizens to walk hand in hand and, and, and really solve problems together. Right. We don't have all the answers. We certainly yep. don't. Yep. So it'll be a fun it'll be a fun time. It will be a fun thing. And like I said before, you'll need to have uh, you'll need to have a pretty strong spine to be successful in doing this because yeah. I know you know it's it's one thing to come up to make a, a new way of doing something but to change the, something yeah. that's been done uh, the same way for a hundred years. Sometimes I walk through the state capitol and you know they have those uh, they have the, they have museum pieces of where the controller <laughs> sat in 1858 yeah. Oh, yeah. and where the Secretary of State sat in 1890. Right. right. And then I think that some of the some of the procedures they have were were are still being used that were used back then. Do you yeah. know Do you know that the state of California spends 10 million dollars a month on postage? Goodness. Because they because they won't because they won't pay vendors electronically. Unreal. When I was a math student, you could be a vendor if you wouldn't be paid electronically. Goodness but these yeah. are some of the things they could yeah. do. And well, I remember we had CHP in here. They have 450 workers that process traffic tickets. Wow. 450. Wow. Now, if you could, if you could automate that process, yeah. which you could do, sure. could have done for 10 years, what are you going to do with those 450 jobs in this environment? Those are tough, tough questions that, that you got to answer. <laughs> nah. Well, I, I, I know we're running short on time, but yeah. I think the one thing that, I, that I'll, I'll leave as a parting comment is um, the days of building yesterday, tomorrow are over. Yeah. We have to get away from this big bang approach. We have to iterate. We've yeah. got to bring people to the table yep. and really drive towards sound well, good solutions. Good luck to you. You've got my, uh, you've got my vote, that's for sure. Uh, you. We're almost running out of time here, so I want to take a minute to, to thank our guest, Scott Gregory, and uh, thank our, our sponsors and all our viewers. Uh, come, we've got a great program scheduled for the fall. We've got Betty Yee speaking to the controller. Uh, we've invited her to be on. She's the controller. She's going to talk about the restart of the new uh, 21st Century Project. Uh, we've also uh, talked to uh, folks that uh, well, Rob Schmidt will be on probably in January. We've also got uh, CIOs from CDCR and from uh, uh, Prison Healthcare are talking about coming on the program. So we'll be uh, we'll be loaded to bear. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. That was a quick. One.